Uh, our speakers uh, for this panel include uh, Jose Rosa, uh, Tom Hedges, and Sherry Shank. Um, Jose Rosa is president uh, and uh, Tom Hedges is a graphic designer for Rose Art Multimedia in San Diego. Uh, Rose Art uh, creates websites, uh, 3D animation, interactive CD-ROMs, graphic design, and videos. Uh, uh, Mr. Rosa will be returning in, uh, in, to San Francisco next month to receive an award from AV Multimedia Magazine as one of the uh, country's top multimedia producers. Uh, they happen to put together the Casey Geary, Reed and Shank website, which is a, an award-winning website. Uh, and I think you're going to really find uh, what he and, and our panelists have to say. Uh, Sherry Shank, who happens to be my wife, uh, is also the marketing director at Casey Gary Reed & Shank. She uh, has a master's degree in business administration and uh, marketing. And so uh, we have put her to good use at our office and works with uh, Rosart in putting together uh, our uh, marketing. Uh, so with that, I'm stalling as long as I can, Jose. And uh, I will, uh, who, who should I turn it over to first? All right. Momentarily, I will turn it over to Jose Rosa. Thank you, folks. Um, I guess I don't have to go up there because I'm hooked up. I just want to um, take a, a quick little survey to get an idea. How many of you or your firms already have websites set up? One. OK, then you're in the right place, I guess. Because what we're, what we're really focusing on here is how for you to prepare to be a good client for us or one of our compatriots. One of our experiences or one of our major experiences has been frankly that most of the people that come to us, whether they're attorneys or whatever profession, whatever their goals are, usually come in very unprepared and with very, um, either low expectations or wrong expectations of what the website is for, what they expect it to accomplish, uh, on and on. So we find that, for the most part, a, a large part of our job is not really so much the actual building of the website, but in acting as a consultant to help the entity, in this case, obviously, law firms, uh, understand what it's for and what the best ways to use it are and then, therefore, to create a plan as to what the best way to build a website is. Um, the web is, is a lot of things. Um, and for the most part, it's not very good at the one thing that most people who want to be part of it think it's good for. In other words, as an advertising medium. Um, I mean, ask yourself this question. What kind of an ad needs an ad to get to it? It's not very good advertising, is it? If you need to direct someone by buying another ad to tell them where your ad is. So the idea of a website, strictly coming out of your promotional budget, so to speak, um, this, is, this is the first place. Let's try and correct that. Um, is it part of marketing? Well, yes. In fact, Shari will be talking about that part. But it's really part of your, your infrastructure. Um, for, most, for most retail types of businesses, which law firms aren't, we usually give them the analogy that rather than this being a type of advertising and marketing, this is more akin to opening up a new store. Only this store has a location on every desktop in the world. Um, in the case of law firms, really what you're looking at is rather than a way to get attention to your business, it's a way to make the business function better. Now, yes, one of the aspects, of course, as with your offices, not only do you work there, but it's the first thing that your potential clients see as they're walking through the door. So you want it to be impressive, you want it to be informative, you want to be able to distribute that information. But really, the value of your office takes place behind the receptionist's desk, right? I mean, that's where it really matters, where your desks are, your filing cabinets, your libraries, on and on. Well, real websites, and the websites of the caliber that we're talking about now that are beyond just a little simple web page and your picture and a little bio and where you went to school, um, are, are really the same thing. They have a lot of functionality. But figuring out what type of functionality is what you need is the trick. We find that it takes somewhere between three and six months from the day that you call someone like us to the day it's finished. Well, out of, let's, let's take the long scenario. Let's take six months. Out of that period, usually the first three months, nobody's touched the computer. It's back and forth. Can you give those out now, the, the handout things? 
it's back and forth, um, basically question and answers and trying to get into your head as a client to understand what is it that you think you want your, your website to do, which is usually very different from what it will wind up doing three months later that you really understand what the possibilities are and what's realistic. So we have um, a, a couple of different perspectives. And in fact, one of them um, is actually from, from the client side, which, which would be Sherry Shank, because she's kind of the point person at, at this particular firm. Um, I'm, now I'm stalling for Tom, because he, he is, in a lot of ways, our point man. He is, is the old school of our business. In other words, he's a graphic designer. And so he's the kind of guy that you had to do your logo, your stationery, your uh, letterhead, uh, even to brochures, catalogs. Well, a lot of firms are kind of somewhere in the middle. They have some of that stuff done. Maybe they have nothing done. Maybe they have a lot done. But either way, the website's going to have to fit into all of that. And primarily, and one of the big concerns is usually as far as how it looks. So um, Tom is kind of the guy that goes in and does an inventory of what you have that exists now, what's worth keeping, and then how to integrate the rest of it either with the website or really more to the point, how to integrate the website to make it fit whatever your existing, uh, whether it be advertising campaigns, brochures, uh, if you have established looks, colors, logos, um, so forth. So first off, Tom Hedges, it's all yours. I'll just make this uh, as quick as possible. Uh, I'm a graphic designer for Rose Art Multimedia. It's my job to come up with the corporate logo or logo type for your particular firm. Uh, this is a very time consuming process. It's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, what we'll do is come in and talk to your company first to find out your philosophy uh, your goals, um, your history, and the future definition of what, you're, what you want your company to be as far as a specific, simple design element. Uh, like I said, this is a time-consuming process, and it's not easy to do because of the number of people that are involved. Our first meeting with the client we have several questions that we'll ask you. Uh, first of all, we want to see everything that's been printed. Uh, that way we get some idea if there's a particular focus or direction that you've already taken the company. Uh, most large corporations have corporate ID packages and these packages are set up to tell uh, sites away from the office exactly where that corporate logo or mark or bug, where that goes in relation to the ad or the brochures that they're designing. Before any discussion of the website can take place, we need to establish this logo because it's going to be seen throughout the site. And uh, what we'll do is we'll set the logo up. And then once the, the logo has been approved, will apply it to the stationary package and all collateral pieces. Uh, once this is done, once we have this thing taken care of and the logos established, we can begin design of the website. And I'd like to say that you can have the greatest website on the planet as far as design is concerned, but if the transportation isn't there, you, have, you don't have very good websites. So design is just part of this whole process. What we'll do, first of all, is design some very rough comps for you to see what we think you, you're looking for in your website. That's after the logo or logo type has been established. Uh, this very first meeting, like I said, is with rough comps. And uh, they're rough because these, this is the place for all the, where, where all the changes will be made. Um, the second meeting. We'll sit down with some pretty tight layouts. In fact, you'll be able to go to the Rose Art website and see an actual working part of the site to see if this is what you're looking for. After the launch of the website, uh, we suggest that you follow it up with the direct mail campaign to whoever you think is necessary to receive this 
to notify them that you do have a website because it's pretty difficult to just get out there and find your site without prior knowledge. My background personally is I have designed stationary packages, print ads, corporate logos for Genentech, iMed Corporation, Everest and Jennings, uh, some of the largest high-tech medical advertising uh, groups in the world. I've met a lot of interesting people. There were a lot of challenging products that had to be visually shown uh, with simple, just simple little design things. Uh, I've met a lot of interesting people and like I said, every project was enjoyable but it's always a challenge because of the number of people involved and the different philosophies of all the companies that I've worked for. Uh, with Jose's help, are we ready? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to show you just a couple of examples that we've uh, designed stuff. They're two completely unrelated companies. Schaefer. The first is uh, Schaefer Publications in San Diego. Uh, Jane Schaefer Publications produces curriculum guides for English teachers. It's a very simple site, but it's pretty easy to navigate through it. We have uh, her stationary package right here. Uh, I know Jane personally, she wants something really simple, so we thought, how about an apple? Yeah, right. Uh, we got away from the apple, and we used uh, the lamp of knowledge. So we did a very uh, modern design of the lamp of knowledge. And if you go to the website. We don't have the website online, but this is, this is uh, a screenshot of that site and you can see how the logo is implemented and before you get to the first page that first page uh, it's called a splash screen looks almost identical to to the the business cards and so forth um, uh, the next one we're gonna go to Casey yeah uh, the next one will go to the Casey Garrett Reed Shank stationary package this is their presentation folder it's a gold foil stamp on a duplex classic linen paper that's a very elegant presentation folder. Uh, you open it up and you can actually see the stationery. We have this thing set up so you can see the stationery. There's an uh, illustration of the building on the right-hand side of the presentation folder. Uh, it's black on the outside, white on the inside. Uh, the stationery is a gold foil stamp with uh, green, British racing green uh, ink for the engraved. This is a very elegant stationery package. It's uh, very seldom we have clients that will take the time to go the extra mile for this kind of uh, letterhead. The, the website that you see in our little web there, again, it's a screenshot, but as, um, as Sherry and I continue this, you're going to get to see more examples from that particular website and how it illustrates what Tom is talking about in terms of making sure that everything is tied together and you know, kept as a unified kind of presentation to the public. Uh, on that website, you'll notice that there's uh, what we call icons, which are actually an illustration of a floppy disk. Each one of these floppy disks has a title underneath it plus a graphic element on the disk. If you want to go to asbestos, you just click on the asbestos icon and it takes you to that section of the website. I'd like to add that this website's also been translated into Spanish. Uh, this is an enormous site, but Rosart has the capability of compression of files. And I think Jose said that we could probably put everything on one small floppy disk. Hmm. So this Almost. is a lot of information that uh, can be downloaded very quickly, and it's a very easily navigable site. The left-hand side of the web page you'll see is the Casey logo, and then there's uh, is it seven buttons. Yeah, if you want me to go to the site, hold on a second. I'll, I'll just I'll open that now so you can, you can walk through that. Okay, this, this is the very first page. You'll pick either English or Spanish, and uh, we'll click on English. There were also just, text versions. Let me just uh, say one thing about this, that, and it doesn't appear on here. Um, it, regardless of where you are uh, in the world, if you're in the morning, if you're in the afternoon or in the evening, it will uh, identify that time zone. Oh, that's the next one. Oh, does that go? All right, one. so yeah. here we are in the, in the afternoon. Uh, on the East Coast right now, it would say good evening. 
Right. So it, it knows to recognize your time zone. Yeah, we're, we're not online right now because we don't have the, the plug. We didn't so trust this phones. Is just, we just made a copy onto the hard drive, so it's not active at the moment. That's why. Well, in New York, it would something. still say good afternoon, then, is what you're saying. Right, right. right. <laughs> wherever you are, the, wherever the viewer are, is it actually looks at your computer's clock and sees what time it is where you are and, and tells you, you know, the appropriate reading. We um, took this page to make a very simple statement about Casey Gary Reed Shank. Uh, the library is actually the logo. Once you cross over with your cursor, you'll see that uh, you get into a library on the site. Uh, you click on the logo, and uh, because of the lights in here, you can't really tell, but we've actually taken the time to make this logo look like a gold foil stamp. Uh, you click on that logo, and it takes you to the very first page of the site. Now, what's very important about this is that navigation panel on the left-hand side, that remains on the screen the entire time you're at the website. So in case you get into 20 or 30 pages of the site and you want to go someplace else, you don't have to scroll to get to a link to get where you want to go. You just click on one of those buttons and it'll take you right there. Uh, also, the illustration of the building with the uh, street address, C State Zip, that remains on the screen at all times. Also, we want to make sure that there's no question that anybody at this site, if they want to know where you're at, they have access to a phone number and a street address. Uh, then, like I said, you click on one of these disk icons and it will take you to that section. Uh, in that section, there are lots of words that were, are linked. That's uh, the one specialty of this website. It'll take you anywhere you want to go in a click. And like I said, you don't have to scroll to get to a link. So I guess that's it. I'll be, yeah, I'll be taking you a little. In fact, both Sherry and I will, will be, you, this is going to be our example today to illustrate. So you'll be getting to know the site fairly well. But at this point, thank you, Tom. Um, Sherry is going to give you the opposite perspective. She is you. She's giving it from your side. She is the marketing director at Casey Reed. Casey, Gary, Reed, and Shanker. Boy, I'm going to have somebody mad at me today. Um, and she is our point person. So basically, uh, if we do our job well today, we will we'll have you as prepared as, as she is so that you'll be able to, I'm not saying, this is one point that I'm going to repeat a bunch of times, one way or another. Whether you hire, obviously, you know, we're, we're a small firm, you, everybody can't hire us, so that's not my goal. But this is my goal. If you don't hire us, hire one of our compatriots. One of the things that we see over and over and over again is, well, my secretary's cousin knows HTML, so we're going to have him do it. Well, if your secretary's cousin knew brain surgery, but just because he'd read it in the book, would that be a good idea? I mean, this is, this is for the most part, over the next 10 years, how most people will know your firm. This is more important than your front lobby, than the car you drive, than your offices. This is the majority of people from now on. This is how they're going to know you. It has to look good. It has to do what it's supposed to do. It has to work right, and it has to work right the first time. I don't think it's a good idea to put that into the hands of a 16-year-old, as bright as he may be. So. Thank you, Jose. Uh, can you hear me on this mic? Actually, yeah, we want to go back to the Rosart site, right? Not yet. That's okay. Go for it. Uh, I'm going to talk first a little bit about how the website fits in with the Casey Gary Reed and Shank marketing plan. Uh, Casey Gary Reed and Shank has a strategic marketing plan for the year 2000 that targets the following markets. Satisfied past and current clients, referring attorneys, personal and professional contacts, and potential sources of referral. We have three overall objectives with this marketing plan, and those are, one, to maintain and enhance existing relationships with satisfied past and current... <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. To, uh, to maintain and enhance existing relationships with satisfied past and current clients, um, referring attorneys, referring doctors, and personal and professional contacts. Um, number two, to increase the referral base of attorneys, doctors, and community leaders through targeted promotional activities. And third, to maintain enhance and promote the reputation of the firm and its attorneys, not only within San Diego, but throughout the state of California. A full marketing strategy combines the familiarity of the markets that are being targeted with creative ideas to achieve success in today's increasingly competitive arena. And our goal is to achieve our overall objectives with this carefully planned strategy. 
And one of the tools that we use to reach all of our target markets is our award-winning website, cglaw.com, which you've seen a little bit of. Our clients can communicate directly with our attorneys and staff and can access confiden confidential information through a password setup that we have. And this has been particularly useful in our Exxon Valdez litigation where we have over a thousand clients that are fishermen up in Alaska and they can access up-to-date information about the litigation appeal process at any time through our website. Uh, referring attorneys, physicians, personal and professional contacts, use our website if they're, site if they're interested in researching any information about our firm. They might be interested in referring a specific case over and want to know what type of litigation we're experienced <laughs> in handling. And perhaps the greatest use of our website is to reach potential sources of referrals. And we are accessible through many search engines and we are listed in several internet access services. And there are many ways that a potential client or referring doctor or lawyer can reach the cglaw.com site. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. And it is our goal that once people locate our site, that they'll be successful in navigating through in an, in an informative and visually exciting experience and to make them want to further explore their relationship with Casey Gary. And I can tell you that having spoken with all the attorneys in our firm, that they're all in, in, in agreement that our website has been a very valuable source of new cases for the firm. Um, one of the highlights that we are planning for our marketing plan for 2000 is that we will begin promoting our website, as Tom mentioned. Um, so please look for that. I'm not going to uh, elaborate on that right now, but if you hear about cglaw.com over the next year, then you know that I'm doing my job. <laughs> Spoken like a true MBA. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, really what I want to do is walk through the process of actually building a site with you a little bit. I hope all of you got one of these guys. What, there, what, by the way, uh, Jose, if, if you haven't gotten uh, a copy of the handout, they're up in the front. So if absolutely. You need. Um, what what this is 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 a combination of two things. The the development process is our experience, kind of distilled, so that someone right from the first meeting gets an idea of the steps involved. Now, the time frame, as far as the steps go, varies greatly. For a, a one person, you know, if you're a sole practitioner, it's you and a secretary, uh, you know, and you, and you have a pretty good idea of what it is you want to do and what you want to accomplish, chances are if we met for the first time today, uh, your site is completed in four or five weeks. Um, on the other hand, for a major law firm, it, again, it can be six, seven months. And it depends. Um, we happen to be a firm that, we're, we're a multimedia firm. We're not just a web firm. So often we help with our clients' content development. And what that is about is most of the people that, you, that you'll meet that call themselves web, web developers, that's, that's what they do. That's all they do. So if you need photos, you need to have them already or speak with someone else and arrange with you know, photographers. And uh, if you don't have copy, um, for, for the site, which as you can see from all of these, I mean, that's, that's what the sites consist of, is reams and reams of things to say. Um, you need to contract your own writers. If you want to illustrate points uh, with a piece of animation, you need to do that separately. Well, Rosart, this is one of the advantages, is we, we kind of bring this all under one roof. So when we talk about budgets or time frames, it's not strictly the actual technical limited to building the website. It's all of the stuff that goes into building the website. Because again, part of this process is, uh, I've never seen it not happen. It, between this evaluation and proposal, that's, that's where it can go from two weeks to three months, right there. Because that's when it, you, know, you start going, well, you know, we did this case that we're famous for, and I have this video of that that would really work, and couldn't we use that in here? Well, OK, this is a whole other job that you have to digitize and prepare and compress and figure out how that's going to fit into it. And then you have, uh, I mean, it, it can go on and on. So you came in thinking that it was going to be this quick little thing with your logo and a photo of you in front of your office and a little bio of what you went to school. And before you know it, it's a MGM production. And it's inevitable. That's what winds up happening, because it's an educational experience usually from both sides. I've learned a lot about law in the last two years, that's for sure. Um, so this is really to try and formalize that, because 
without going through a process like this, this is, this is the horror that happens. Um, you come in, and from day one, usually you want to know how much it's going to cost. And so it's like, OK, I need a price. Before I can even decide if I'm going to do this, I need a number. Well, how can that be? We have no idea what it is we're going to build. So how can, you know, I mean, OK, here's a number, between five and $500,000. There's a number. That's as close as you can get before you narrow it down. The problem is that in narrowing it down, there's a lot of work there. So you have to go through a lot of steps. So the second thing that you have here is this profiler. And what we've found is that really, if we want to keep it fair for ourselves, in other words, we don't want to have 100 hours invested just to be able to give a realistic estimate to a client, um, we kind of flip it back on the potential client and let them do the work. But they have to do the work under our guidance. And in the past, that meant us investing hours. Well, we've kind of figured out the essence of what we need to base those estimates on. That's where this questionnaire comes in. I hope that you all keep this, because whether you use it for us or not is irrelevant. In fact, most of you I'll never see again. But it will work as uh, a, a a document so that you can prepare a request for a proposal. And if you were to go through this and answer these questions, you would then be able to approach any serious design firm in the world and tell them, this is what I want. How much is it going to cost? If they can't give you an answer, call somebody else, because this is the information that they need. Now, if you really look at these questions, you'll find that you're not going to fill this out like before this seminar is over. It's just not going to happen. There are going to be some questions here that make you reevaluate back to your original business plan. Am I doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction in general? And we want that to happen because it's going to happen anyway. Except we don't want it to happen after you've spent $5,000 and we've committed on a particular direction. And now you go, but can't we do this this way? Well, sure, but that means starting all over again. So, but now you're going, but I don't want to pay $5,000 if we're going to throw that in a garbage can. And it creates all kinds of conflict. So this is a way to keep that conflict down, to make a job go smoothly. My background is in architecture. So I was really firmly kind of taught that you don't start digging for the foundation until you have the blueprints finished. And that's what I bring to my firm, actually. I'm not a programmer. I'm not a graphic designer. We have many of those working for us. But my particular skill is to get it all organized and make sure you don't do step six before you do step two and keep them all in that. And that can sometimes be difficult because there are clients in there somewhere. And they're not familiar with the process. And they haven't been. And they, in this case, is you, haven't been through this many times and don't know what to expect. So that's what this document, and we have actually a, a big uh, folder that we give that this is part of, to give you, to help you have an idea of what that process is like and how to prepare for it best so that you can, you can make it as efficient and, and least time consuming as possible. Um, I'm, I'm going to go quickly through this. Um, the, the initial consultation is, is pretty obvious. You guys do initial consultation too. I mean, that's, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no commitments. You come in. You give me an idea of what you want. Uh, the, the evaluation is really where the meat of it happens. And we don't even really do that until you've come back with the questionnaire. Now, that allows us to ask the important questions. The ones that are on this questionnaire aren't the important questions. These are just the basic information that I need to be able to ask an intelligent question. That's all it is. So I mean, it's not all in this little handout. But it gives us the first step so that we can look at, OK, this is, this is what you think you want or you think you'd like to do or what your goals are. And some of you may have those better defined than others. Now, we see it as our job, not just to do what you tell us to do, because you don't really have that background. So what we're more interested in is what your goals are. What is it that you want to accomplish? And then we see it as our task to then tell you, now these are the best and most efficient and most cost-effective ways to accomplish those goals. So you'll notice a lot of the questions in this questionnaire aren't the ones that you might have thought they would be. 
They have nothing to do with technology or very little. Um, they're more along the lines of a business plan kind of uh, concept, the, I, the idea of, of trying to get out what two years from now you expect to be doing in your business. Um, the proposal, this is where we come back and go, okay, now based on what your goals are, what we think the best way to accomplish that is, this is what the plan of action is. That can be to do the whole thing at one time. It can be a, a phased proposal over you know, a long period of time, whatever. Um, at that point, the rest of it is actually where you guys come in is the agreement, usually contracts and you know, uh, final haggling, negotiating. Um, that's usually when it's, well, yeah, those were my goals, but I didn't realize it cost so much, and so you scale back a little bit, on and on. Then from our part, the fun starts, which is the design. If there's fun in the job, that's, this is where it is from, from our end. This is where we get to be creative. This is where we get to try and turn your needs into our solution. And that, that's fun for us. I mean, if it's not, then one of us is in the wrong business, I guess. But that's, that's what it's about. We don't do this on computers, for the most part. Most of it is, is pencil sketches, uh, line drawings. They're still quicker. Technology is great for a lot of things, but you can't beat a pencil for a lot of things either. So at that point, what we're doing is we're making quick, quick idea, quick studies, going back and going, what do you think of this? And really nailing it down. Towards the end of initial design, it, there, there goes into a, a, a second phase there that it is done graphically on a computer, but it's still really just sketches. They're JPEGs. They're, they're just ideas. So they may look like a website, but they don't work. They don't do anything. Um, at the same time, that, that would be kind of more like what Tom's doing. There's also the technical side, meaning we're starting to build flowcharts, making sure that there's a, it's called the methodology of the site, which is what Tom was talking about in terms of how the site flows, what takes you to what section, what that tree looks like. Um, this is probably the single most important thing about a website. You have a situation where someone is coming to your site for the first time. They've never been there. You have an, a navigation system that they've never seen. And if they spend even two seconds frustrated by it, they click, they're gone, end of story. So you have this balance between wanting to make it really cool and impress them with, no, keep it simple so that they don't have to think to figure out what they're going to do next. So we have to do the thinking. That's what goes into this flowchart methodology, is the idea that it should be second nature. It should be like riding a bicycle, that you don't even realize that, oh, yeah, well, it makes sense that this link is on this page. No, you just go there. And those are the three choices you're looking for. You make your choice, and there you are where you want to be. Because you can't put all the choices on every page. So you do have to make decisions. This is a critical, excuse me, a critical part of this. Um, it's not your problem, or it shouldn't be. I wouldn't expect an attorney to design his own website. And that is a critical part of the design. But whether you get that done well or not, this is one of the factors that the cousin, that 16-year-old that knows HTML, is not going to be aware of. And there'll be many of those. Because HTML of, we've got 17 different specialists. One of them is an HTML programmer. One. And on most of our jobs, all of them are involved at one point or another, from copywriters, narrators, real programmers for database and, and secure areas, the kind of things that Shari was talking about where you can communicate with your clients or with other attorneys. Um, that's not done in HTML. That's, those are not programs you learn in six months. These are you know, people who have five and, uh, year degrees at least in computer science. Um, on top of, you have the graphic designers. And just because you know how to use Photoshop or you know, PowerPoint, doesn't make you a graphic designer. It doesn't give you the fundamental skills of you know, having an idea of what composition balance is and color coordination. And all of these things have to be balanced to work seamlessly and work smoothly so that there is no jarring uh, dislocation like, that doesn't look right, or I can't find what I'm looking for, or why can't I get from here to there? On top of that, there are all the things that are part of my industry that are not the fun things. For instance, um, how many different browsers are in use? Two? 
five? Well, that I know of, there are 27 at the moment that are in current editions right now. Now, granted, two of them make up almost 90% of that. So you're just going to say, the heck with the other 10%? OK. Now, among the two main ones, let's say we do say, forget about the other 10%. You, you, right now, you're at five point something, depending on whether you're at Microsoft or, or Netscape. Um, not everybody has the latest browser. We, we our server stats, which you'll see more of also, go back. There are still a lot of people using 3.1, 4.0. Each one of those are capable of doing different things. So if you come to me, which chances are at the first meeting, you're going to go, I want this to be the coolest, hottest, smokingest thing there is, and I just listen to you and do what you want, you're going to have like 40 people in America who can see your website without having to go through all kinds of trouble first. So you have to be able to coordinate this. We haven't even started talking about Windows, Mac, or like what Tom Penfield was talking about before. You still have people in many parts of the country who are on 28.8 modems on a telephone that even a simple website will take you three minutes for each page to load versus you have people in other parts that are on cable modems that it'll load like that. Well, if you put a lot of graphics and you don't concern yourself with compression, um, you've just lost three quarters of the country. What we look for is the sweet spots. What, what are the numbers? And they're changing. They change daily. So part of what makes our job fun and frustrating is there's no relaxation. There's no, I've earned my position. I can kick back and get rich. No, it doesn't exist. The minute you've even had that thought, you're obsolete, and a 16-year-old kid has zoomed by you. You have to constantly be plugged in on everything, the browsers, the hardware, the software, uh, new, new software that are tools for us, not only the software that you'll be concerned with, but the software we use to create this stuff. Because what you're doing is you're taking all of that information and finding the sweet spot. What is the most amount of graphics I can use on your site, depending on your goals and who your market is? And that's the other thing. You see, every one of our sites is designed specifically. We're proud of the fact that we don't have a style. There is no such thing as the rose art look. Our job, we're not fine artists. We're not supposed to express ourselves. That's not what we're about. What we're supposed to do is express you. So our job is to find out what your needs are and understand what they are, and then do the best job for that. And that means visually, that means technically, that means everything. And part of that is, who are you trying to reach? I mean, your audience is going to be very different than who Amazon.com is trying to reach. They're trying to reach everybody. Are you really trying to reach everybody? So do you have to really design down to the lowest common denominator? Probably not. Well, the trick is figuring out who you are aiming at, and what is the, the profile of that person? What software are they using? What kind of machines are they using? What kind of connection do they have? And that becomes your judging point for, OK, this is how far we can go on each one of these questions. But before we can do all of that, we have to know what those things are. And I don't have 10 years to go become a lawyer, so you guys have to tell us. And you know, without that becoming kind of a dental extraction and pulling out of you, it's a lot easier if you're prepared for that and you know that when you walk in the first day. Um, Final design and production. You would think, and in fact, that 16-year-old I refer to, <clears throat> this is it. That's the area he gives you. Okay, That's it. He comes in. He says, what do you want? And from day one, he's going to start banging code and hacking. Okay, and Hacking is not necessarily a bad word, by the way. Um, and he's going to go into production. Well, imagine if you knew a carpenter and you want your house built. Um, but you don't know an architect, you just know a carpenter. So you go to him and you tell him, look, I want a house. Uh, let's not even deal with how much is it going to cost. Just start building. Well, he has no plans. He has no idea what he's building. But because he's not a, a very experienced carpenter, he just starts picking up wood and starts putting nails in the thing. And by the time you figure out that's not what you want, the house is half built. That's what's going to happen with your 16-year-old. Um, and that's a symbolic number, by the way. It can be at any age. It's, it's the same. The age is not even a factor, really. What it amounts to is experience. All the things that you'd look to if you, if you needed surgery, if you needed a good accountant, if you needed a good lawyer, what would you do? You'd look at portfolios. You'd talk with past clients. You'd see what organizations they're members of, what kind of credentials they have. Well, don't cheap out 
on, on any of this. This is, this is it. This is, again, from, from now on, how the world is going to see you and how they're going to perceive you and how they're going to interact with you. Better don't buy the leather couch. Put the money here. If it comes down to that kind of choice, hopefully it, it won't. Um, after it's built, this is the other thing that's important and that I really strongly advise that you don't, don't chintz on, which is testing. We go through several different phases of testing. You don't want, the, the web has no patience. The web has no tolerance. If someone goes to your site, it doesn't work, that's it. Not only are they gone then, they are gone, period. You had your shot. There are too many websites. Every week there are three million more. So they're not gonna come back to see if you work the next time. It has to work the first time. So better that your domain name is up there with a pretty logo that says coming soon for the next six months than that you put up a crummy site that has under construction pages all over the place that half the links bring you 404 errors. Don't put it up. Don't let the tenants move in until the carpet's laid and the paint is dry. It's that simple. Get the thing done. Make sure it's done right. We personally, we have an in-house web server. So what we do is after each site is done, we make everyone on the job, and we kind of start usually with the guys who weren't involved on that particular job, make them use it. And we don't tell them, or we tell them as little as possible. We don't tell them what the site's for, what it's supposed to do, where it's going to go. And we have a little form that they have to fill out that tells us what's the site for, how easy was it, on and on and on and on. It really gets fun with the second level of testing. The second level is it's on the web, but it doesn't, it's not residing at your domain address yet. At your domain address, it's still under the, the you know, there's the coming soon page, okay? We create a, a secondary IP for it, meaning nobody will find it by accident. It's just not gonna happen. But we take that address then and we give it to our secondary testers, which often involve the client. This is where your cousin comes in and your wife and your mother-in-law and the rest, everybody you know. Let them go see your new site. And th the only instructions that at that point I'll want you to give them is try and break it because somebody will. So let's find out now. Let's, let's catch those commas that we should have known were there. Let's get the stupid misspelling of the client's name that he's gonna kill you for later. Let's get all of that now when there's 30 people looking at it, not 30 million. Um, and then there's the final testing. And the final testing is it's published. It's out, it's on your domain name. If it's cglaw.com, that's where it is. But we haven't what we call published it yet. We have a department that all they do is, is know how the search engines work, and that's a seminar all by itself. I'm not even gonna play with that. But it, it's a science, an art, I don't know, it's voodoo is what it is. And knowing how to make them work for you is kind of voodoo. Well, we've got a couple of guys who are pretty good at that. And very quickly, and again, it depends on which search engine, but overall, it takes about three months. Um, in our case, every one of our clients come up within the first three pages on every one of their keywords. I'll, I'll stack that up against anybody, but I don't expect that's gonna carry much weight in this room. But what it means is, if somebody's looking for you, they're gonna find you. So we haven't done that yet. We, um, we, it's, it's up there, so now what's gonna happen is there will be accidental people coming in. And every one of the sites we do, aside from having um, you know, the normal contact, which in this site is, is here, which again, as, as Tom was saying, the top frame and the side frame are always there on this site. Um, and this is to talk to, to Fred or someone else at the firm. But every one of these sites also has an area, and now if I can only remember where this particular one is, where you talk to us. See, now I, I can't do anything with that now, because again, we're not on the web right now, so the connection won't be there, and I only took this site here. But this is, this is where we hear the gripes about, you know, I clicked on this link and it went to a different page and what's that got to do with it? And hopefully, by the time we actually start promoting the site, those are really down to a, a relative number. They'll never be gone completely, never. We've had the KC site up almost two years now. From our own server stats, we can see broken links and all that. Computers, 
do strange things in the middle of the night. It was working this morning, you went to sleep, when you got back up, it's not working anymore. So you need to have, and it's nice if the person who does your maintenance is the person who built the site, or else he's gonna have to kind of go through the education process all over again. Someone who's always there, always looking at it, always fine tuning it, making sure that it works. Um, as far as building it, that's pretty much it. The next step is how now the company actually uses it. And again, back to Sherry. Yeah, this is gonna. Um, yeah, go ahead, start, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. dig in. Um, the way that we internally use the website to guide the marketing plan is, um, it's really interesting. We go into the, I go into the RoseArt um, website and from there, I click on Extranet and put in a password. Which we've actually changed here because she's not going to give you the real one. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I can get all kinds of statistics about the people that have come to our website. And I'm going to highlight some of them for you. The site steps. Yeah. Keyword sites. No, site, site steps. Site. The 1024. And this will be for the week of 1024. October 24th to November 2nd. Um, I'm going to point out some of the interesting statistics for, that I use internally at the firm. Um, some of the other things that I'm going to skip over are really for our website management team, which Jose takes care of and really doesn't have much meaning for me. Um, at the summary level, you can see that we had 336 unique visitors during that time period that this uh, that the summary is, is talking about. And what that means is that I could go into the website 15 times looking for something, and I would be counted as one unique visitor for that time period. Um, so 336 different people visited our website. Um, homepage, we had 233 homepage hits, and that homepage was the page with all of the, um, the little icons, the little, um, what were those, the little? Floppy disks. Floppy disks. Um, what that means is that not everybody comes in through our front door, essentially. And they can find us through other ways. And, and as we go down, I'll, I'll show you more about that. Um, can you go down to daily visitor activity? This tells what the activity was for each day of the summary. And um, it tells you both web page hits, which are not unique, and unique visitors on there. Um, which next? The last 20 visitors, this is really not very relevant, but kind of interesting. Um, this is how the FBI can track criminal activity on the website. Um, so although you and I don't know who, you know, 100.277 is, somehow the FBI uses this information and they can tell. Um, Those are the IP addresses I was talking about earlier that are behind the domain names. So it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't give us the the address of the person who is accessing our website. Um, Unfortunately, huh? Go down to hours and days of the week. Keep going down. Yeah. Um, this tells us the most popular days of the week and hours in the day for people um, who are <laughs> accessing our website. And um, so you can see that the most popular hours of the day was 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Friday. Um, this can be helpful if you're looking to do some advertising on your website. Also, if you, um, for instance, if Fred wanted to set up a, a chat room with maybe some of his asbestos clients, then he would know the most popular time to do it. Tom? I'm lost. Uh, what are these hits for? It's for... It, are they looking at Dave Casey or something? Or? We'll, we'll, we'll get down. Right, it gets, as we go, it, as we go down, general. we get more specific. Right now, I'm just talking in general terms about um, the day and time of the week that people are accessing our website most, con most frequently. And then as we go down, we'll get more specific to see who they're actually looking for. Um, we'll get down to that in just a second. The, these, these numbers, where they come from, is on the actual computer where their website is hosted. As, as someone goes in there, it generates information. At the end of the week, we have software that we go back into the computer and analyze that information and try and put it into understandable terms. This report, which is considerable, and this, all of this is only for one week, 
is one of those reports. But it has a lot of different areas that have all kinds of meanings. And that's what Sherry's doing, is going through and explaining what each of the meaning, I mean, what are the meanings to each of the areas are. Does that explain? Well, I, I'm a computer illiterate, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, but what, what I understand is you have an initial website, and that website they go into our website, right? Um, no, no, they, this is all from their website. We're just a company that takes care of it for them. So the stats are through our site. What we're looking at are the, the users that have accessed our website. And we're looking at information about the people that have accessed our website. And uh, if you, I think if you, if you hold on with us for just another minute, you'll be able to see where these people have come from. And that's what's the interesting part. Um, go down to the top entry pages. Here, OK. The top entry pages tells us how users have entered our website, what page they have come in through. And as I mentioned before, not everybody comes in through the home page or through the front door. And they can en enter through a search engine or through a, a linked website. Um, for instance, um, Law Jones Act, that talks about the Jones Act. And that's within our website. That is one page within our website that talks about the Jones Act. And somehow, they have gotten to that, maybe they entered, um, maybe they have Yahoo as their search engine and they entered Jones Act. And it automatically brought them to the page on our website that talks about the Jones Act law. That's right. Okay. Huh? Well, there's some, there. Oh, let me go back, sorry. Um, the, yeah, see, this, this, is, this is the first page with information. This is that first page where it says, like Fred was saying, good morning and good afternoon. Um, this is like the Jones Act, but it talks about Products. liability. Um, this is uh, Thomas' uh, page, so obviously he's getting some interest directly there. Um, the, the way they're, they're named is really more for us, because the average person never sees these names. They're, these are the file names that are used that are written so that the compu computer can understand them. But if you know what title goes with what page, then you have an idea of, of how to correlate them back. So this is kind of like almost private code, because we can name the pages whatever we want. But then they look and they go, that page has that name, and they understand what that is. Tom, let me give it to you in lawyer terms. If somebody calls your <laughs> office on the phone, and you have a questionnaire that, you know, how did you find out about us? Who referred you over? Uh, 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 what, what's the subject that you're calling about? This does this on the computer. It tells you who's calling, what time of day they're trying to call you, and what's the subject that they're trying to call you about. Okay? So it's like a receptionist taking down that information. Does that help? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lawyer, I understand these things, you see. And as we go down, we'll get more specific so you can actually see what these people typed in to find you. Um, we're going to go to the referring sites, and here we can see how our users entered the website. Um, okay, these are the referring sites, and we can actually, we can't do it now because we're not online, but we could actually click onto it. The first one is www.think dot org slash POW, okay? This is a website that has to do with our um, POW litigation that we're involved in. And this is a website that was set up by the POWs themselves, and we are linked with their website. So if we were to click onto this website, which obviously we can't do now, um, we would get right to their website. So we would be able to see what they were looking at when they got to Casey Gary. And somehow, something in there said, you know, do you want to go to cglaw.com? And they clicked onto that, and they came to us. We only have one website, but we're linked to all these other websites. We're, we're linked to a lot of websites, probably more than we even know about. Um, but we find out about them fairly quick, because if anyone, if you have a link on your website to their site, and someone uses that link, I'll know about it next week, because right. it'll show up here. The third one down, www.findlaw.com, that's one of those companies, and I know that you've probably all gotten some stuff in the mail, especially Atla, I know, um, has an agreement with attorneylocate.com. These are these um, services that they list you by your area of specialty. And so that's one particular one that we are listed in that somehow somebody got to that site and they advertise their site so people access them and um, found us within their site. Five somebody. And, yeah, a lot of them. Um, and then um, Yahoo? yeah, yahoo.com, that's a search engine. And um, so if you have Yahoo or if you have Netscape or something like that and it, you, know, you type in what you're interested in looking for, 
Um, that's how people came to us. They had plugged in asbestos. If you see, if you look along there and it says asbestos. How do you get linked to all of these different sites? Um, um, We'll have a question and answer. Should I? Should we just fill this now? Okay. Um, again. Why don't you repeat the question so that it's heard on the? Okay. Video. The question was, how did we get linked to all these sites to begin with? Part of it is you do it on purpose. That's that's promotion. What our industry calls promotion is we know the ones that are important. Now, as far as search engines, again, um, we can say it's a science, but it, it's it's an odd science because the rules are always changing. Um, we have two guys in our office, basically, that what they do is they watch how the search engines work on a week-to-week -week basis because they change their rules that often for how they um, decide who's what number. And they are constantly going back and adjusting the Casey site to make sure it fits those new criteria so that the Casey site always stays high up. So that if you're looking for asbestos or the Jones Act or whatever, they'll always be up at the top. So it's likely that you could spend twice as much as they did building their website, but half as much as they do and get no traffic. So it's really important that you have someone who knows what they're doing and beware the scams. They are out there and they are intense. Oh, for $49, we'll get you in 39,000 websites. Yeah, okay, what can you do for 39 bucks? So what do you think I can do for 39 bucks? Um, then finally, if you build a good site, that means it's content rich, meaning there's a lot of information there that people want, which means it's worth stuff. So it means on my homepage, me being, you know, Joe Sixpack or whatever, on my little homepage, I want to remember how to get to your site. So I put a link on my site to get back to your site when I want to, which then people visiting my site see and use. So there's a certain amount of residual that goes on. And then, last but not least, there's advertising. You can buy all kinds of stuff. You can buy banners, you can buy links, you can buy, like Sherry was talking about with Find Law, you go into directories that charge fees. And, and all of this is part, is, comes from the questions that we were talking about earlier into what your goals are. But I don't want to digress too much here. I think that I hope I answered the question. And I get things every day from these companies that, you know, for eighty nine ninety five a month, you can have the top banner on their website and, you know, like fine law and attorneylocate.com. And um, one of the things that we're, that we're trying now, per Jose's suggestion, is to all of these companies give you one free listing. And uh, so we're taking the one free listing and, we're, and then through this we can see which ones of those actually bring us some, some referrals, some, some people, some users. Um, so this is how we can see all of that. Then if you go down a little bit further, it'll show you the search engine keywords. And these are the words that people actually put into their search engine, like on Netscape and Yahoo and Microsoft and all of these, um, to locate us. You can see Jones Act has had a, a lot of, we've had a lot of um, requests for that lately. Class action, asbestos, Tom Fen Penfield must have told all of his relatives to log on. Asbestos. So you can see all of these search engine keywords. E everyone understands the concept of search engines and what they are and how they're used? Anyone not? That's if you log into your computer and, and it says, what do you want to look for? And you put in whatever you want to look for. Sure. Real basic question. I'm not criticizing you. We're learning to build a watch here, and I don't know how to do it. I want to do business with you. What do I have to do to do business with you? Uh, Fill out this. But that, that, yes, that would be the best thing. To get one? I mean, that's, that's yes. If, 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 you can, if you can. Now, it's possible that you may need our assistance just to get through that. So really what you need is our phone number or someone like us. I want to do it, but I just want to know what do I have to do to get this thing going. Well, why don't you talk to Jose afterwards? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can, we, can, we can walk you through that whole process. But yes, it's, it, it's, not, it's not something, and I, I don't mean to put you off, and I don't think anyone does, but the one thing that you're not going to get is a fast, easy, two-word answer. This is a major endeavor that, that you're approaching here. 
Um, and if you, if you want to think in other terms, you're going to wind up in other terms, meaning you're going to wind up with a piece of junk that doesn't go anywhere, and regardless of how much money you put in it, it was wasted money. So from day one, understand that you've got a project on your hands that's going to take time, it's going to take an investment of resources, your own you know, thinking power and, and time and, and energy. Because if you don't, if you don't give me the, you know, in the olden days of computers, two or three years ago, there was a saying, garbage in, garbage out. Well, you're the garbage in. If you give me garbage in, if you give me bad information or, or the wrong answers, or answers that you think are right, but you're not gonna do the work to make sure they are, well, I'm gonna design to that criteria. So you've gotta be prepared to really dig in and know what you want to accomplish so that we can then give you back good information that will accomplish something. And sir, I'd be happy to talk with you after this. So Where to? I think we're pretty much at the end. What I've been trying to show you is the behind the scene information and this is all through our website management team that gives me all of this information and through this I can see what people that are accessing our website are interested in, in knowing about and so that I can change the website or, or update it or make it more relevant to the people that are using our site. Yeah, I want to know the bottom line, how many cases have you gotten out of your, your, your website? I think I can speak to that better. I mean, I don't think we have an exact number. We get, we get referrals from this, we get, uh, uh, I could, yeah, I'll talk to you afterwards about specifics, but uh, it, it's amazing uh, the, the information that comes back either through uh, email from the, from the website, which you can you know, get email right to the website under the contact uh, hit, or phone calls that we get. And uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the page has been very successful uh, thus far in developing business I'll tell you where I find it to be most successful, and that is uh, not so much not so much um, the the person on the street calling, but it's other lawyers in other jurisdictions looking for a lawyer in San Diego. Uh, it used to be that you you know, would get a phone call and you might send somebody a brochure, and and you may not never hear from them again. Here is an opportunity for people lawyers typically to find you. Uh, they could look up David. They could look up articles that David Casey has written. They could look up articles that I have written. And it is a tremendous resource for other lawyers uh, who are looking for a lawyer in San Diego. And that's probably been the best, uh, best uh, vehicle that, that it's uh, been for us. Um, I, to elaborate a little bit, the, the question points back to my original statement of what do you want out of the website. Um, that is one way to judge a website. And that's strictly looking at it as a form of advertising. But in this particular case, 50% um, of this website is behind these little doors over here. In other words, that the value here isn't necessarily in new business, but how much you're saving on existing business. How much are you saving um, in dealing with other firms and rather than having to FedEx something or, or you know, transfer documents some other way that are secure documents, that other firm can upload them, you can view them securely from here. Uh, how about doing that with a client? You give each one of your clients a, a password and a username, and when they go into the client area here, which, which we're very limited, I can't go any further than this because, again, we're not on the web and the ASP pages don't work, but they can, they can access all of their documents. And believe me, this is secure. I'd trust this before I'd trust the file cabinet in your office because somebody can just open that and stick their hand in it and pull the file out. And that lock there, that's like a hammer and a screwdriver in about 30 seconds. Whereas here, you need a serious degree and you have to be a dedicated hacker. So, I mean, it's kind of like the same thing with the credit card. You know, don't ever use your credit card again unless it's on the web if you're smart. Huh? That is the only place where using a credit card makes any sense. Every other use of your credit card is really dangerous. Now, that's backwards of everything that everybody's been hearing for the last 10 years, right? But it's true. This is a major portion of their website. So again, when you were to sit down with us or another consultant, and you told us, this is what I expect of my website, I don't care about any of this back end, what we call back end stuff. All I want is new clients. You'd wind up with a very different website. I'd, I'd estimate probably 
of their budget in the last two years went into areas you guys aren't even going to see today that are all really functional uses. It's not about being pretty. It's about they make the office work better. So now, ask Fred, how much have they saved in the last two years? Ooh, it's a little bit harder to put your finger on that, isn't it? But you know that you're working a little bit more efficiently and a little bit more streamlined. And you keep records that you can locate very quickly. We've got to wrap up very okay. shortly, Jose. But I, I can tell you this, uh, with some of our uh, litigation where we have large numbers of clients uh, having to contact us, we could send out, particularly like with the Exxon litigation, we could send out communications to them. They can respond to us directly to there. We don't have to have people answering the phone calls each time. We don't have to have somebody opening up the letters and responding by mail. They can communicate with us uh, 24 hours a day, and likewise, we can respond uh, you know, in due course uh, at, at the lawyer's uh, convenience or the paralegal's uh, any time of day or night. Uh, so it's, mu it's a much more uh, user-friendly way to communicate with clients uh, over you know, a period of time. Yes, sir. When you're saying a lot of clients like Exxon, how many are, are a lot? Well, I mean, certainly a thousand people is a lot, I think. But but it doesn't have to be a thousand to make it, you know, to warrant it. It just so happens that we have about a thousand people in the Exxon Valdez litigation with whom, if we need to send out a mass mailing, we could send it out uh, through this site, uh, and and it's a secure site. They can respond to us when we ask them questions. They can respond to us on the secure site. Uh, so that uh, they know that what information they're passing back to us is safe and we know that the communication we're having with them is safe. How did you get a thousand Alaskan fishermen? So that will be your next lecture yeah. down the hall. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to wrap this up, but I want to mention one other thing. Um, technology, which is really the overall title of, of this seminar, um, is, is way beyond just the web. And a, a, a quick example is another project that we're in the middle of right now, you're going to get a sneak preview of, for the Casey firm. They're uh, doing a, we're doing a brochure for them that is a traditional kind of paper brochure, right? But in the back, there's a floppy disk. That's kind of where the floppy disk on the websites come from as the icons. And that is a presentation. Now, it is not the same as the website, they don't duplicate each other, but again, you have the same thing like what Tom was talking about in terms of making them match and have the same kind of look and feel. Um, the World Wide Wait. Come on, don't make me look silly here. Here we go, okay. So again, these are not duplicates of what you saw on the web, but they're made so that you get the same kind of feeling. This is something that you all know what a floppy disk is, yes? Just a little cheapy thing that you can lose it and you never think about it. So you can literally give these away as business cards. Um, this, I'm not hooked up in all of this stuff, but there's actually sound and music on this also. You go in, there's a small interface. And again, we, we, we mimic the type of buttons, the type of looks, the colors, the textures, um, the, the idea of the building. There's some basic information on the company. There is very limited space on a floppy disk, so you're limited into how much you can put here. But you go through it, I mean, kind of quickly. And then most importantly, because hopefully this will all lead to, um, you know, contact us and new business. This is aimed directly at new business as opposed to the website. So you wind up, and one of the most significant areas is make sure that they can get to the website very quickly and very simply, and if not, just email, and also to Primaris. Do um, you, you understand? So the floppy disk on the computer will give access to our website, and that page that you just saw would be a place where people then could get the rest of the information on our web page. So they would start out with our brochure with a, with a, a little floppy disk, and once they get that up on their screen, and they would then be able to click on to our web page, and then they're right into our web page directly. Pretty neat so stuff. We're, we're combining our brochure and our website and everything that we do together as one. It's all one plan. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for well, your time. Thank you all. I, I hope you all uh, learned a lot.